Hey there, Simmers and Animal Lovers. It's Erin, the Rescue Simmer, and welcome back to another episode of the Hundy Fundy Baby Challenge, where we take the 100 Baby Challenge to Weird Culty Fundy Church. We are opening on James playing with his daughters as we left last time. It is the next morning. James is just getting that time with his girls. It is Easter church day. So this is not just a normal church day. It's a very special church day in their religion, in their faith. Guys, we have so much to do today. So this would be, no, what are you doing? Oh, he's making it so that Blue can be near the babies. Oh, you do that, Blue. Oh my gosh. Now that we have the doggy babysitter, the amazing Blue who loves his children, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send James down to do his farming, his gardening. He's not gonna do too much awful today. He's just gonna harvest and sell some stuff. And then they are going to get ready for their Easter church day. Look at them. Oh. Did she just roll over on her own? I think the milestones are broken, you guys. I really think that they're broken uh, because they're definitely doing things that I'm not getting notified. Excuse you, sir. Okay, sir, that's enough. That's enough. Put the babies down. Put them down. Oh, this is so broken, you guys. They're gonna have to nerf this. I don't know how, but they're going to have to. Bethy was gonna go make some Easter breakfast for everybody or Easter grand meal, but she realized that they didn't have much, so she's going to use their precious few simoleons and try to get some groceries up in this place. In the meantime, I'm gonna have her eat some homegrown peas just so that it takes the edge off a little bit for her hunger. She is expecting, of course. Speaking of expecting, you guys saw the title of the episode, Blessed Be the Fruit. So we are gonna be talking today about why fundies have so many children. Why at least the independent fundamental Baptist version of the fundies do. As a warning, I'm going to be providing a verse from the Christian Bible. It is not for any other purposes except to provide context. This actually comes from a verse in the Christian Bible that I will pop up on screen now that compares children to arrows and compliments a man and says that blessed is he whose quiver is full. Now, this book was written in a time where definitely carrying on your family name was a very big deal and the more children you had because of the whoppingly high infant mortality rate, the more security you had that your name, that your tribe, all they just became good friends with each other, was going to continue. So for sure, the more babies you had, the more offspring you were able to produce, the more blessed you were perceived to be. And now it's not that, you know, giving birth isn't a dangerous thing. Oh yes, he can love handiness. It isn't that giving birth isn't a dangerous thing. It's just that because of modern medicine, because of modern science, uh, which you can interpret our gifts of the watcher, it is far less likely that you are going to have a child that does not survive. So is this a particularly effective verse in its original context? Maybe not, because one could argue that we don't have the same pressures, socioeconomic pressures, we don't have the same medical pressures, that once we did, so there isn't as much of an urgency on having massive numbers of offspring. But part of the tenets of this faith is that if it was good enough for Moses, it's good enough for us. And while there's a simple, almost comfort in that theology, I, I don't know necessarily that it's terribly practical. And again, this is just my opinion. This is just how it hits me. We could all read the same verses in the same books and they could hit us differently depending on where we are and we need to have respect for other trains of thought but this can be incredibly problematic because what we do know is that a woman who continuously adds pregnancy after pregnancy after pregnancy on her body is really taking away or at least cutting short her body's ability to repair itself oh she is so hungry we got to feed those babies though those poor little babies. Oh, and it's thunderstorming, so they're scared. It's okay. Oh, and we're voting. <laughs> we're voting because it's Sunday, and tomorrow I think is gonna be the last day to vote. So I think that self-efficiency is something that this family 
and this community would really pride themselves on. Now, if you're somebody who just has a goal in life to have a lot of children, and that's fine. Families look different. We have families of all shapes and sizes. Whatever works for your family is what works for your family, and you do not have to be apologetic or explain yourself at all. But to have a faith that gives more privilege, more preference, more recognition, and more blessings, I'm doing air quotes, to a family that says that you have to have these amounts of children is maybe not doing what you're asking it to do. What you're doing is you are absolutely exhausting your parents. Ooh, quick question. Enric or Eric Alvarado and I were planning to spend some casual friend time together. Should I do it? <gasps> Ma'am. Okay. So she keeps asking questions that would take her outside of her husband's umbrella of protection. Remember this nasty thing? Those raindrops are there because they are everything bad that could happen to you. And if you step outside of your husband's authority, your pastor, authority, then you are outside of the authority of the watcher and all of those bad raindrops can come and get you. So ma'am, although your husband is someone that we know might have questionable morals and definitely not as dedicated to you as he ought to be, you still need to submit to his authority, get under your umbrella. So I would say no, not this time. So we are gonna get on with the Easter festivities. Uh, I also need to explain, I put in that we're gonna attend a holiday ceremony for most Sundays, including this one. I didn't know at the time if I was going to actually go to a church service or if I just wanted them to go off lot and say, hey, we went. I think for this holiday, I'll keep that. We won't actually go to church service today. We're gonna have a special church service tomorrow. So they'll just have like a quick one and we'll go ahead and do that in the evening after we've done our Easter dinner. So we're gonna have Bethy right now inviting her gal pals over. We're going to see a couple of your sims today and then tomorrow we will see even more. Oh, thank goodness the girls are asleep. We'll get a few moments peace while we eat our grand meal in this rainstorm, this absolute rainstorm. I'm going to have everybody go ahead and grab them and we'll get to some preliminary introductions. I'm actually so excited about this. Ooh, Miss Elderberry. Respect that we are having our religious feast today, ma'am. You should be with your family. Very first, what I would like to do is introduce Miss Delilah Mueller. Oh, she's scared. Poor thing. Bethy has seen how scared she is. Delilah is quite a young girl. She is an adult, but ooh, just barely. And that actually has to do a little bit with her story as everyone's freaking out. Let me pause it here. Oh no, Beth hasn't been acting like her normal self lately. Beth's very scared and a bit paranoid. Should she embrace the change? Oh my goodness, you guys, I don't know. Paranoid seems like it would be just about perfect, but I don't think I want that yet. I don't think I want that yet. Beth declined a self-discovery trait moment. She didn't feel like it was the right fit for her at this time. That's okay. She might discover a new one in the future. I feel like what happened is that she was having an obsessive thought and she was like, wait, am I crazy? Am I paranoid? And maybe she's like, no, 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 I, I'm not paranoid. I'm not paranoid. So I think it's maybe on its way, but not here yet. <laughs> Okay, so let me pause it here and bring up the Muller family. Samson Muller has believed in the Watcher his entire life, believing it was his duty to educate the masses from a young age. Then a young teenage Delilah Windbreaker caught his eye with her mother and father's reluctant permission. The then newly young adult man and his youthful blushing bride were wed and he saved her from the falsehoods she would have been living under. Thank you, Koi Hoi, for this very thoughtful upload to the hashtag Hunt Fundy, I love them. I had written, uh, commented here, you can't see it here because it's from my library, that I got preacher vibes from him. I also love the undercurrents of a suggestion that maybe she was somebody that came to him for counsel when she was young and he sort of eh, groomed her a little. That definitely happens, but I also appreciate that Delilah is a young adult and so is Samson. I like to imagine that Samson is at the end of his young adult life and Delilah just began it like as soon as she became a young adult, boom, they wed. Like it was like, it was a done deal. But because Samson has such a high charisma skill, which I gave him, and he was viewed to be such a avid follower of the Watcher, Delilah's parents were charmed. Did they feel great about it? No, but did they feel like this was being asked of them from the Watcher by the time Samson got done with him? Absolutely. So Samson and Delilah, their names are 
a religious text story and you guys actually had a really great idea about what to call the religious text. You had a few great ideas actually. The book, the holy book, that would have been outstanding. But I especially love the suggestion from a few of you for symbol, S-I-M-B-L-E, not S-Y-M-B-O-L. Although I love that it sounds exactly the same. So it is a symbol story where Samson, a vessel of the Watcher, is tempted away by Delilah. She ends up being his kind of Achilles heel, his weakness. Again, this is for context, not any kind of like preaching. So I love the reference. Uh, that was actually really smart. They did also include that if I wanted to change anything, uh, like their traits or the way that they were dressed, that that would be welcome. And thank you so much for that there. <laughs> appreciating uh, this photo of friendship. Uh, so Cecilia actually had her baby, which is why she's not here today. She is not expected to participate in the holiday ceremonies. Okay, great, lovely. She is taking off everything. So the last thing that they have to do today is just to go to a holiday ceremony. And honestly, I think I'm gonna have that done right now. Because if you guys remember, today is her due date. So she can give birth anytime I want to do the holiday ceremony as soon as possible. I think our guests should leave. We did have a great Easter holiday dinner. Uh, we are gonna send to daycare because I don't want them, <laughs> I don't want them here depending on any of these folks here. I do not trust the Sims to do this. Oh my gosh, they are just back. Oh my goodness. Actually, they're not even back yet and she's already gone into labor. <gasps> oh my gosh, okay. so. I don't know why, but Cecilia came over. I think that she knew that we were close to our time. She wanted to make sure that our babies had great childcare. She just became a mom. She is Bethy's really only friend. Let's have our baby at the hospital. We are going to join her and we are going to bring James. Thank you so much, Cecilia. She does not deserve Messiah as a husband. I just feel so bad for her. She's such a good soul. Yes, we are here. What are you wearing, sir? Okay, Bethy, it is time, my girl. Let's get into your hospital gown. Sir, I know you're tired. Uh, Bethy is tired. If she's not complaining, you don't get to complain either. You guys, I asked you last time whether we were having one, two, three babies, boys, girls, a mixture. Time to see who was correct. Again, first comment that guess is correct. Oh, it's a boy. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so I saw a lot of you guys suggest the name Jasper and I love that. So welcome to the world, Jasper Joseph. Any more? Oh, it was one baby boy. Okay, all right. So I am looking at these comments and it looks like Alley Cat 0136 was the very first person to post that she thought it will be a single boy. So thank you, Alley Cat, so much for guessing. Thank you everyone for guessing. I think this is really fun. I would like to do this every time Bethy is expecting. <laughs> Let's get these exhausted parents home. If, <laughs> poor James, he's such a chatterbox. He always loves to talk to people. He kind of loses sight of uh, what it is we're doing. <laughs> There's baby Jasper. <laughs> Let's go ahead, grab him and move him somewhere a little bit more appropriate. You guys called out that we should be using cloth diapers. I absolutely agree with you because who doesn't like making an overwhelmed mom's life harder? Let's give her more laundry. I am all about it. Eh, close, but no cigar. They uh, they didn't make it into their beds. So we're gonna have Papa do some tummy time with him. Oh, ha, she sneezed, little girl. Do some tummy time with Amethyst. We're gonna have mom still in her hospital gown come up and feed her baby can we just take a minute to appreciate our friend she took care of the dogs she took great care of the kids although she did not put them back in their beds maybe they were just getting you know some tummy time that's important i don't understand why she wasn't watching them but that's okay sim logic you know oh she's appreciating her baby wonderful daddy is playing with his little girl thank goodness that cecilia oh <gasps> Coo milestone unlocked. Didn't we already unlock that? I feel like I'm correct in that we are. <gasps> you guys. Oh, it reset them. Oh, that's frustrating. It is 9.30, so I think I'm gonna have him 
put her to bed. He's gonna spend some time with Opal, I think, too. I know, good boy. Let's give him a pet. He has been a great boy. Oh, sweetheart. She fell asleep on the floor. You can't stay there all night, sweetie. Let's have Mama soothe Amethyst to sleep. He'll grab his little Opal and put her to bed. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm so worried about these guys' milestones on top of them, like, getting erased. How am I gonna have time? Like, they are already going to age up in just a few days. Look at this. Their brother ages up tomorrow into an infant, and I am absolutely terrified. I'm absolutely terrified of that. Having three infants. And the girl girls age up on Wednesday. So that'll probably be next episode. How am I going to get to their milestones? How am, <laughs> how am I going to make sure that they're hitting everything? I just, I just won't, you know, that's the long and short of it. It'll be interesting to see how raising children like this will affect them at least in the sims mama is so exhausted i am gonna have her play with blue for a minute oh and cecilia is sitting with the baby she won't be able to stay for long but it is so nice that she's telling her friends essentially don't worry guys i will be the responsible adult here i don't know who's staying with her baby but you know maybe she just had to get out for a while maybe she has a sitter i don't know tell you what guys i am so sick and tired of our stuff breaking <laughs> i cannot wait till he upgrades everything oh it's gonna take so much time especially with this amount of children here also don't play in puddles my good blue boy i know you are bored out of your mind out of your skull but please don't also go to sleep james oh it's okay buddy just don't do it you see how nasty you are i don't want you to be nasty yay he learned not to play in puddles what a smart boy oh my gosh you guys everybody is asleep i will see you when ever they wake up <laughs> Well, that was short-lived. It is now 1.30 in the morning. Mom is up with the kids. They are hungry. I'm going to try to kind of soothe them to sleep, feed them, of course, change them, and then try to put them back down. Especially with a new baby in the house, mom is going to need as much rest as possible. Oh no, baby is up. He is hungry. Come on, Jasper. Dad, get out of the way. All right, mom is here with the food. No worries dude she is getting really hungry herself it has got to be so demanding on her body she had babies she was really kind of recovering from getting pregnant and having labor and delivery and then she was feeding babies which you know you're designed to do as a female if you choose to breastfeed. Then she immediately got pregnant, was building a sim inside of her. Thank goodness it was not multiples. Watch her bless. And at the same time, nursing her two twins that she already had. And now she's been through labor and delivery and she is nursing a newborn, which has very different nutritional needs than an infant does. For instance, newborns need colostrum. It's a very very special kind of breast milk that gets them started. Infants don't need that, so I don't know how her body is regulating all of that. It has got to be so draining, and then on top of it, she has three sleep schedules to keep up on plus her own. You know that that candle is burning at both ends. Let's have her get a little bit of food, and then if these babies can get to sleep, then she can get to sleep too. Oh, sweetie, oh honey, I'm so sorry. Mommy's hungry, she's gotta go get some food. It's okay. You guys did call out that we can do like the baby mobiles. We're gonna have James put in mobiles for them. They have to be out of their cribs in order to do that. And something that I did not know is that you can do a safety strap on their changing table, which we're for sure gonna do. These cribs and this changing table are going to service us for many, many babies to come. <laughs> and so we want it to be safe. I know that James and Beth both want the best for all of their children. So they are gonna want this as safe as possible for all of their kids. A laugh milestone just got unlocked. Oh, look at the beard that this man is growing. <laughs> he is like, man, I feel like now he's a gym. This, this man is a gym now. I'm not exactly sure why he's up except to watch the milestone. And honestly, James would for sure do it. I'm gonna have him try to take care of his dog, <laughs> of the family dog, I should say. And then he's gonna try to go back to bed. Bethy is going the same way. Now, how long they'll be in bed, I, I don't know. But we can hope for them, right? Oh, nice clean dog. They are both going up. I will see you guys in the real morning.
Good morning, good morning, happy Monday morning to the Jacobs. I'm gonna go ahead and give them some sleep replacement because uh, they need to get up. It is time, today we are doing a special church day because yesterday was Easter church day. Ooh, while James is walking past this wall, this nice beautiful blank wall, I actually wanna pop over into Bethy's inventory. They got their marriage certificate sent to them from their local government and they have the girls and Jacobs birth certificate. So this is gonna be our birth certificate wall. Each generation will have their own. And again, we wanna get at least 10 of these guys in each generation. Also, little Jacob's handprint needs to go in the nursery with his sisters. And speaking of nursery, you guys, let's pop into build by. Hmm, maybe we can move it above here because I want to give them, yes, I wanna give them one of these, I think that James and Bethy would give whatever they could of their finances to decorate their nursery. They're proud of their children. They actually did this because they love children. They want children. Oh, uh, the newborn gift basket, I think we can definitely use. I am also putting out some little play mats for them. Like this is starting to look a little bit more like a nursery and I'm kind of loving it. And you guys, maybe we can put in these cute little curtains. They're very expensive, so I think I can only get one. But let's see some of the patterns on these guys. Oh, that looks very country to me. This looks, ooh, very bright. I love it. Oh, I love. Doesn't this look just like grandma's curtains? Okay, that's very blue. Maybe they would change it. Oh. I love the yellow, oh, the green. I'm just gonna be gasping over curtains here for a minute, pardon me. Yeah, we'll we'll stay green because that's the theme of our nursery. I also want one of those, I, okay, I know I'm spending money hand over fist, but he's about to go and earn us more, you know? And like, look at this, look at this, this is so cute. Bethy, my dear, your not pregnant self can drink your energy potion, your blessing of the watcher, and enjoy yourself. Jim, my man, I need you to go and get yourself ready. We're gonna shave <laughs> that beard, although it's a very attractive beard. I do quite like the chin strap. Oh, she's praising their dog. Why don't you fill that bowl for him? Uh, her bladder is actually looking really good. I'm so happy for her that she's not just like starving, about to burst from having to use the bathroom like a Russian racehorse. Oh, my baby. Oh, bull sweetie. She had a rough night. Mom's just gonna take care of herself for a minute. And then I think we're just gonna put Opal down here. We're gonna try to do some tummy time with her, I think. Amethyst is up, but she's she's fine. She's absolutely fine. Uh, her needs are about to not be fine though. Rather than put her down, how about we change our little girl's diaper? Oh, James hears his daughter crying and he's going in to check on her. He's He trusts his wife, but I think honestly, he's like, I don't know that she should be crying that much. But Bethy's gotta do what Bethy's gotta do. She's gotta be able to be clean, right? Oh no, she's fussing. She needs to rest. Well, she just woke, well, she didn't just wake up. She was actually up for a while. She's just sort of sitting in there self-soothing. Oh, our wiggly little girl is happy to be out. Let's get her diaper changed. I think we'll go ahead and give her a bath. Oh, our unhappy little amethyst fell back asleep. I feel so bad for her. We will go ahead, we're gonna get Opal all right, and then we're going to get amethyst a bunch of attention. Yay, first bath and first bubble bath milestone is unlocked. That's amazing. Okay, she's not clean though. Okay, take two. <laughs> we're gonna see if she can accomplish bathing her child. This is very stressful. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so cute though. Oh, and baby boy is up. Upset. Today is his age up day. I cannot wait to be able to do that with him. I do want to go tonight to church. I think we're going to have an evening church service. Okay, finally not smelly. So changing her diaper did it, which is lovely. Now mom can go take care of poor baby Jasper. Okay, so after 
infinite fighting and arguing between Bethy and James. James wanting to change his son's diaper, Bethy telling him that no, he can't do that uh, because that is her job. That is the way that she is allowed to contribute. Poor Jasper is now being appropriately taken care of. <gasps> she lifted her head and rolled over. Look at her, she got the rollover on her back milestone. That is amazing. She's got a couple of firsts. That's outstanding. She can coo, she can smile. Wonderful. Mom's gonna try to feed Opal because she is awake and then she's gonna put her down. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so much. Dad is gonna go comfort Amethyst because she's up, she's stinky, she's hungry, she needs all of it. Actually, Dad, no, you're not. You are gonna go put in a baby mobile. Hopefully he can get that done before Opal needs it. Oh, thank you, Belle. She is, <laughs> she is congratulating us on our third baby. Maybe you should not. <laughs> this is really hard. Oh my gosh. And we still have to try again for a baby tonight, you guys. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. We're going to change Amethyst's diaper, get her fed, and then I think my stress level will go down just a little bit. I honestly so much respect to those who can do the 100 baby challenge or the 100 infant challenge. Like, oh my goodness. The micromanager in me can't even with this. I'm so glad we took that off the ley line trait off or on the ley line trait off. I just, oh my gosh, I can't. But now everybody's needs are in the green and I think I will be okay. Yay, the crib upgrade is now completed. That is so cute. We are definitely gonna do birds. We're not gonna do space because you know what? Science makes us mad sometimes. Ooh, she looks like a free air tinkler. Yup, absolutely. P on the caregiver milestone unlocked. Lovely, <laughs> absolutely lovely. Aw, Opal. <laughs> Opal's asleep over there. Amethyst is getting to be asleep. Let's do some tummy time with our girl. Come on, baby. Come on, Amethyst. You could do it. I know, but mommy's right there. It's rare, but she's right here with you. <laughs> Lift her head milestone unlocked. I feel like she already did that, but okay. <laughs> Look at this guy. He is just doing everything he can to invest in his daughter. <gasps> Yay! She got the rollover milestone. Good job, Amethyst. And dad leveled up in his handiness skill. That is amazing. That's going to be so great. She got the reach milestone. Aww. And the bed upgrade is completed. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Look at guys. It looks like we actually love our kids. Oh, Samson Muller. Hey, welcome to Fundy church men so that's the group that they're in james try starting a gathering for them all right so he's letting us know grab milestone yes okay uh so he's letting us know that there's going to be church tonight i cannot wait i'm so excited mom is very hungry so let's have her grab some leftovers while she can some nice watermelon salad this is going to be again keeping in their tenets of their faith that women are like jewels. They are to be regarded as precious, but also they are to sparkle. They are to be attractive to the men that they are married to, but not attractive to anyone else. Part of that is keeping with a good diet and a very specific idea of what your body should look like. Do you wanna know what you need to have a beautiful body? You just have a body. Whatever it is, in my opinion, that is beautiful. Aw, hey, big boy. He's just playing with the fridge, as you do, as a dog. I think at five o'clock we'll go to church, but before then, I would love to age up our bouncing baby boy. If And guys, where are we gonna put a third crib? I don't even know. Oh, here he goes, Jasper, our little infant. I'm terrified, you guys, I'm so scared. Yay, Jasper aged up. What kind of infant is he going to be? He is going to be cautious. These Sims appreciate the familiar, but are slow to warm up to new experiences, locations, and Sims. I feel like that's, oh, he's so cute. I feel like that's partially because we've ignored him. And he just unlocked the smile milestone. I feel like it's gonna be so hard to keep track of who has what. It's gonna feel like a bunch of repeats. I know, buddy, it's okay. Oh, sweetie. He has the same hair as his sister. I feel like I'm going to have to change that. His needs are looking pretty good, thankfully, though. So, um, oh, dad. 
you know what? He's bathing his daughter and I'm not going to stop him because that's his daughter and he loves her and she needed a bath. So we're going to let mom bond with baby and, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead, pause this here. And we're going to give our new bouncing baby boy, our first baby boy, his fundy makeover. Very first, I love this hair, but it's the same as his sister's and I'm going to get confused. So I wonder, I think that's going to be about perfect for us. All these babies have James's hair. I wonder if we're going to have any that have Bethy's hair. This is pretty much covered enough for them, but man, that's a lot of self-expression there on that hoodie. I'm going to go ahead and pop up a picture of Jasper. So Wikipedia says that Jasper means spotted or speckled stone. So I'm seeing a lot of like oranges and gray. Oh my gosh, that's cute as a button. And I really love that. Typically in this faith, even the boys' legs would be covered down to their ankles. I think I like the white socks here. I don't like the idea of shoes for every day for infants. This just seems a little, well, you know what? That's actually not bad. It's orange, but it could be like a tan, right? Pop those socks on our little boy and I'll do the formal shoes in black. Oh my goodness, they're little oranges. That's perfect. I do wanna cover his little feeties. Those socks should do really well. That's actually kind of perfect for his party wear. It's just like a nice long sleeve shirt. He's got some jeans on. Let's give him some little orange shoesies. And we've got some socks under there. No one else will know that they're there, but we will. Here's his hot weather wear. And of course his cold weather, full body, full coverage. It seems very warm to me. And it's nice and orange. So here is our Jasper Joseph. All right, Jasper, my man. Where are we gonna put you, dude? I don't even know. Um. Okay, I think I might have an idea. Let's plop these in our inventory. I am gonna pop in one more crib. Let's move these down to the living room maybe, cause space is getting kind of cramped up in the nursery. Hopefully this will be the only time we need this amount of cribs in here. I think three is gonna be our max for this room. Dad, since you already bathed Amethyst, I'm gonna have you put her down. I wonder what he's going to tell all the men at church about this. In fact, I know what he's gonna tell them. He's gonna tell them nothing. There'll be all this talk about how it doesn't honor the watcher when he does it. Yay! <laughs> Opal unlocked the laugh milestone. Daddy is gonna play a song for her on her mobile. And I think he's gonna go ahead and play peekaboo with Opal. Oh, what are we crying for, baby? Comfort your daughter. You know what, dad, you already bathed one girl. Why don't you bathe the other? Let your wife spend time bonding with her little boy. And again, guys, we are telling no one. Delilah, oh my goodness. Okay, so in about half an hour, we are gonna be going to church. We won't be there long, just long enough to make introductions. I know I did not get to everybody during Easter supper. Come on, big boy. I still don't think his dad has been able really to hold him much. That breaks my heart a little, but we'll get it fixed. Don't worry, we will fix it. <laughs> Look at her playing with him on his mat. That's so cute. The reach milestone was unlocked. What's that? Jasper started moving his little arms to reach for nearby objects. Oh my goodness. Good job, buddy. So although the Jacobs have two girls, and they are very proud of them. They love them very much. Really, they're preparing the girls, yay, to be great helpmates and wives to their husbands. The boys are prepared to be spiritual and community leaders, even going as far as into politics. So there is going to be a lot invested in Jasper. The girls, as they grow up, are going to kind of be mini parents. They will have to parent the next child youngest to them because Bethy is going to be completely busy with all these infants. I just wanted to let you know I followed your advice and chose not to spend more time with Eric Alvarado. Good, he is not your husband and you're not allowed to spend time with him. Did you just want to be friends? Oh well, you don't get that option. <laughs> so guys, as I mentioned before, I made a club for both the men of the church and the women of the church. So what I'm going to do is have James actually start a gathering. 
So we'll have the men come and meet first. I will introduce you to their families based on the heads of household. Why is she here? It looks like somehow they both started, which is, I mean, that's interesting. Okay, so let's pause it here. We have already met the Muller household. This is Pastor Muller and his wife, Delilah. You guys know Messiah, of course. How can we forget him? This is Christian Rouse, who we saw at Easter dinner, but that I didn't get a chance to introduce you guys to. So let me go ahead and pop open the gallery. So Sim Chan, who uploaded this beautiful family, wrote, Meet the Rouse family. This watcher-fearing couple is all about actively being a part of the community, spreading their faith to everyone. Belle, a full-time homemaker, is a soon-to-be mom who's beginning to navigate the challenges of motherhood. Christian is an engineer, but hopes to one day change his career path and work at home to support his growing family in the Watcher's image. I love these Sims, you guys. I actually have them moved in right next door to us. Their lot is very um, eco-friendly and very techy. They aren't trying to live technology-free. What they are doing is they are using Christian's engineering background to literally make their whole lot self-sustaining but still needing things like running water and energy so he is going to be like the community's can-do man next up for introductions is abel walsh and his wife i am corbin who uploaded this beautiful family writes here's my original family for my personal fundy challenge so the walshes are a couple who really like the ideals of this faith i think especially since abel is jealous he's lazy but he's an animal caretaker like he has an interest in farming and hobby farming he loves the outdoors he's just struggled a little bit with how to get there I think that this faith appeals to him, being the head of the household, putting a lot of weight on him to provide, and he gets a lot of glory. His wife, Allison Walsh, is family-oriented, she's neat, and she's creative, so she's got all of this potential that she's putting and funneling into her family. She could do it any way she wanted to, but I think she's pretty on board with this lifestyle. She may have even been the one that got him into it, because she wants babies, she wants lots of babies. And the very last household that needs to be introduced is this um, very interesting man, Weston Douglett. These Sims and their story were uploaded by Geely3. If I'm mispronouncing that, please let me know. They write, Weston and Rochelle Douglett want to have babies. Rochelle hates children. But does this matter? No. Perhaps if she were raised by non-fundies, she'd be able to follow her dreams, not her parents' interpretation of the will of the Watcher. So this speaks to how much pull established members of the Watcher communities have, even over their grown children. They are seen as patriarchs and matriarchs. Even when their children move out to other households, they still have to be respected and revered. Rochelle seems like a fine sim. She just doesn't want to have children. She has no want in her to be a mother. And her faith or her parents' faith is forcing her to do so. So she wants a big happy family because she has been told her entire life that this is how she can contribute. But she doesn't really want the children. She wants, she hates children. She wants the ideal. She just doesn't like the practical day to day of what that would mean. She is neat as she's been raised to be, and she's a freak and she does not like spending money. She could do any number of things with her life, but she's been told that this is it, this is her life. And the husband that was chosen for her was Weston Douglett. He wants to be the leader of the pack, so he would love probably to have his own church and own church body. He would love to be the leader of his own fundy group, but my man is paranoid. And honestly, I don't think the rest of the fundy community quite trusts him. I mean, you could argue that there is a certain level of paranoia in a lot of their beliefs, but it's not overt. And I think that Weston is. He's an insider and he's self-absorbed. So I get the impression that like, let's say there's a point in the service where they go and they ask if anybody has anything to pray for. Weston would take the floor and just not give it back. It would be all about Weston. Outstanding. I love all of your stories. And guys, if you aren't seeing your families yet, do not worry. We have so many more to go. Uh, we only had five slots in each club, which is why there's only five families in the world right now. As we gain more influence points, or I forget what they're called, like as we gain more points for our club and we can add more members, I will add more families. I tried to pick from like the first group that were uploaded and I prioritized families at this point that didn't have any children because that's, you know, where we were. As our kids age, we'll add families with more members. 
Um, so like with kids, things like that. So like I said, if you did not see your families, no worries. Uh, they will, we will probably see them in the future. Thank you guys so much for all of your families that you have uploaded. Oh, look at Allison. She's playing us some beautiful piano for our evening service. I'm going to say that the babies were able to come. They're just in the nursery right now. They're really at daycare, but that is a-okay. Oh, look at Beth. She's reading her Bible. <laughs> So this is an informal evening service. I would imagine that there are some classes going on. I would imagine that there's some counseling going on. I wonder honestly if we can make something. I might have Bethy do that. Um, we're gonna go down into the church basement. Uh, that's gonna be the more informal part of our church. This guys, I should call out, is a lot that I downloaded off the gallery. It's not in our Hundy Fundy hashtag. Uh, it's just called Faith Baptist Church. I don't remember the creator because I didn't save it to my library, but it is on a 20 by 30 lot if you do want to download this. I did tweak it just a little bit for my own purposes. This is an outstanding lot. And like, look at this. We have a full kitchen. We've got really a dining room, like a fellowship hall here. We've got bathrooms everywhere. We have nurseries, all of it. I think I've set it as a rec center. So we'll see members of the community kind of meander their way on in here. I'm not, I think, ready to to uh, try to get more members quite yet. Oh, look at Cecilia studying her symbol. And guys, if I mess up on the terminology, then I apologize. I might call it a Bible. I mean symbol. But if we want to, we can keep a counter of how many times I do that. I think that might be fun. All right, well, she's refusing to make food. It is 9.45. So I think what we're gonna do is just end our gathering. We didn't get quite enough, I think, in either club to be able to add more members, but we will add more as the weeks go on. Let's Let's go and get ourselves home. Knox, sir, with your piercings and all your self-expression, you can guarantee that he is never going to be a fundy, <laughs> a watcher fundy. I think that Knox would be one of those guys that whatever he believed in, he was like, yeah, let's have a spirited debate about why you're wrong. And these poor fundies would be like, look, I don't want to argue with you, but that's all I have in my belt. And it would just escalate into something ultimately pretty unloving. All right, guys, everybody is filing home. Oh my gosh, <laughs> look at all these children. This is like thumbnail worthy. Look at all these kids, you guys. Oh, all right guys, they are putting everybody to bed and getting everybody wound down for the night. I am going to leave it here next episode. We are going to be trying for another baby because Lord knows this isn't punishment enough. And you know, blessed be the fruit, the man whose quiver is full, all that. I am hoping that you all have a wonderful week. Thank you all so much again for supporting this channel. If you are watching this far and you haven't subscribed and you haven't liked, please consider doing so. I will see you all next time I upload. Watch or bless and happy simming.